Well, with the Glazers having some financial problems at Man United, not able to finance the budget as Eric Ten Hag wants it, they cannot sell players who they can really find to see to it that they are really so much valuable. They might have been contemplating on to selling Mason Greenwood, and guess what? Eric Ten Hag has gone ahead and said, no, this boy is not for sale. So, good morning. Welcome to United Matters channel as we bring you this story coming in from Samuel Locust, United correspondent for the Manchester Evening News. So much concrete and obviously adding a lot of things concerning the sale of Man United and Mason Greenwood shut, not put up into the mega stores of Man United. We are going to react onto that. And there is something important to discuss about David Daher, United in a total mess. And it shows you that the entire technical department of United and the board are really so messed up. That's why we need in Sheikh Yassim Althani to do what we call a sweep up. You know, a shake up needs to be made at Man United to see these things rectify. You can't do this to David Daher. I'm going to go ahead and reveal to you what United have gone ahead to tell David Daher. And one of the academy players of Man United, Ethan Layard, he has been here from 10 years until he's like 20. United have parted ways with him and they've sold him to Birmingham. Remember, they had just triggered his contract and obviously he has been sold there. Ethan Laird, one of the exciting right backs I've seen come through from the United Academy, but it looks like the absence, sorry, the presence of Arwan Bisaka and Diego Dalo couldn't really see him really be at this club for a very, very long time. Now, let's see close to 300 likes, much in this video, right? And uh, we start it off like this. We thank God for the gift of life. It's a Saturday, 1st of July, and guys, we never made our mark that's it we never hit it of really hitting 14,000 subscribers and i call upon you guys let's subscribe to this channel and really hit this number as up we are left with like 200 subscribers to hit that number so let's keep going let's keep flowing to see it that we really hit that number in a nick of time so let's start it off with what we are being told by samuel lucas about mason greenwood We are being told that Manchester United are leaning towards loaning Mason Greenwood out with Eric Ten Hag again selling the forward. So, United wanted to sell wanted to sell Mason Greenwood because if at all Ten Hag was again selling the forward, then that shows you that the board had made a decision to sell the player. And you know Manchester United, when it comes to money, they cannot terminate this contract. I told you, they can't terminate the contract of this 21-year-old, one of the generational talents I've seen in the past three years. And in his age bracket, if at all he never got these problems, I think would have been up and up, up and running more than anywhere else. I told you a story of Jose Mourinho when he called him through to start training with the first team of United at the age of just 15. It shows you the talent that Mason Greenwood really holds. He is immensely talented and no one can stop her. So he can stop him from going where he's supposed to reach apart from himself. So the board of United having financial problems we are seeing a very good amount of money coming in from Mason Greenwood. Trust me, however much Mason Greenwood has not been playing football since the 31st of January 2022 that is almost one and a half years since he last kicked a ball competitively for Man United. His value has gone ahead to shrink, but not to a level of being a 10 million pound player, 20 million pound player, or 30 million pound player. Trust me, he's a boy that you can sell and get 50 million pounds right now. He's worth that amount of money because a team will understand that I'm taking what we call a raw talent that is going to go in and really fire in all cylinders. And when we ask, how can someone give United 50 million pounds in Mason Greenwood? Because United will tell a team, we want 30 million pounds of up, up. we want 30 million pounds up front and 20 million pounds of add-ons. And, and those add-ons for Mason Greenwood, they are achievable, like scoring when he scores 20 goals a season, does this and this and this and this and this and this. They can get good money out of that deal. And that 50 million pound will reflect in the books of Man United and hence they can spend that same amount of money to bring in the likes of Rasmus Hoyland. That is it. But Ten Hag told them, no, 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 no. This guy is a generational talent. I was at Ajax. 
I saw him score 17 goals in his debut season from the academy. That was in 2019, 2020 under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I'm a manager who can improve talent. I see something great in that young man. If you cannot integrate him into the team this preseason, let us loan him to another team such that he finds himself in a situation of getting back to where he was and we assess him and then we can get him back. That is it because selling him right now doesn't benefit you. And I think this is the argument that Ten Hag really told them that if you loan him out, and he goes out and scores close to 20 or 30 goals a season, maybe to AS Roma, maybe to Juventus, AC Milan, any of those teams, and he scores all those goals in, that means his value will have elevated from 50 to 100. And you can only get that amount of money out of him by one, taking him on loan and not selling him now, and lastly, triggering that one other year on his contract and maybe adding more two years and improving his contract and giving him like a hundred thousand pounds a week so you send him on a loan to revive his career that is what they are supposed to do and i think that angle in which ten hag is seeing in formation greenwood in the selling bit of it is really great but i think the main purpose is he knows that he has been he, ten hag knows that greenwood has taken close to one and a half years without playing football that is competitive football and he needs to get himself back to where he deserves to be. And he needs to get a loan. When he gets a loan, he can integrate him back into his team. As next summer, he won't be looking in for a center forward because Greenwood would have gone ahead to hit the ground running as his talent is really undoubted. So that is coming in from Eric Ten Hag. He's going to hate to block the sale of Mason Greenwood. And he has gone ahead to say at least rather run him and we can use him next season. So we are waiting to see what decision the Glazers are going to take. But as it stands, we might start up a preseason, which is starting next week, without having a center forward that has been signed by Manchester United. Yet we are told by the board and the news news correspondents of Man United to different media outlets that Ten Hag's priority is a center forward. And we've first signed Mason Greenwood. We are going in for goalkeeper. Do you understand it? In my own understanding, I really know why they're doing it because they look like when you get in Mason Greenwood, sorry, Mason Mount, you can easily sell Scott McTominay or Fred and get like 20 million pounds for Fred or 30 for Scott McTominay. When you get in Andre Onana, you can sell Dean Henderson at like 20 million pounds and those two can collect you close to 50 million pounds that you can use to go on and really get in a striker. So it depends on how fast we react. but. Next week, preseason starts for Man United and players are going to report. Now, the Sun Football, that is Jamie Phillips, has also told us that Man United supporters will not be able to purchase a shirt with Greenwood's name on the back after it was omitted from the launch. All other names from the senior men's and women's sides are available, but Greenwood is not included in the list. <laughs> that is it, coming in from Manchester United. So, as it stands, the club is doing it for the good of Greenwood because a person can come out and obviously buy those, buy that shirt and obviously maybe write something awkward about it, you know. So, as it stands, they are testing the waters to see what decision they're going to make for Mason Greenwood and they, want to, they don't want to risk the player. And they've always gotten them out, you know. So, it's like they've made a decision on Mason Greenwood that maybe... He's not going to be on the shirt sales of Man United. And to me, I find it very much good that plays in favor of Mason Greenwood because it won't really affect him. So let's wait and see how that pans out. And a decision, I think, is imminent for Mason Greenwood to really go on a loan. And I think it should be taken immediately such that he really gets a very good preseason with the team where he's going to be loaned. And then later, he kickstarts off the season us up. That is it. So that is it coming in from... Samuel Lucas and Phillips from The Sun concerning Mason Greenwood. Those are the two latest updates concerning Mason Greenwood that I've found up to really put onto your table right about now. Now, let's discuss the David De Gea situation. All understand that his contract expired yesterday. As it stands right now, David De Gea is a free agent. That is it. He's a free agent. That is David De Gea 
for you and i really anticipate that he's pissed off he's going to have his wedding over the weekend and see what united are really telling david De Gea to do it shows you the incompetency of a high level that united is really doing and when we talk about incompetence at man united it's so much in the board and the technical bit of that club now chris wheeler football writer for the daily mail has told us that man united are still placing face to face are still planning face to face discussions with david de Gea over his future the spaniard will be out of contract midnight that was yesterday as he prepares to get married this weekend his wedding this weekend and the best gift is going to give him is to really keep him into a very into a very bad situation of not knowing where how and when he's really going to be yo so after that <coughs> we've gotten this story that's gonna hit to hurt me a lot coming in from neil curtis is a United correspondent for the Sun, revealing to us that David De Gea is effectively being asked to hang around in case the club can't sign a new number one. He has been sensationally asked not to join any club despite his contract being up at United. The club want him to wait in case they can't sign a replacement. Now, how can you treat your legend like that? How can you really? You can't treat David De Gea like that. It's really insanity. To see that United is treating David De Gea like that. I take it with a sack of salt and address my concern to the board for exposing their competency on David De Gea. He's one of the best players we've seen at Man United and you cannot really treat him like that. That keep around, if at all we don't get a first choice goalkeeper, we sign you. If we get one, we let you go. United is selfish, and if I told him David De Gea, I take the selfish mode on. That is it. I don't it on, and I also look for my club where I'm going. That is it, because clubs are really willing to sign David De Gea. Trust me, he cannot he cannot fail to get a club. AS Roma wants him. Very many clubs, Juventus, Inter Milan, AC Milan, they want him. And when you look at teams like teams like Al Nasser, they want him and they want to offer crazy money to him. So. It's very much disrespectful that the club of Man United is telling David De Gea, one of the longest serving players at this club ever since Salix Ferguson left, that he should be doing what they're telling him to do, to wait around to see to it that if he doesn't get a number one, then they really sign him. How do you put up such a statement to a man who is really a hot cake? That is it. He's a traditional goalkeeper, I really understand, but very many teams will be willing to offer him service to David De Gea. Then, you are telling him to keep around until you get in number one, yet you are advancing talks with Andre Onana in Italy. So, it's very much disrespectful and I think the board should stop these things of really disrespecting our legends because they've gone ahead to do them on several occasions and these legends have gone ahead to come up and obviously through the dark at the glazes so that is it for david de Gea. let's wait and see what happens from that and lastly let's talk about ethan laird who signed for birmingham and he put out a very long post on instagram that you have to read and obviously see how he bid farewell to man united he said it's time to say goodbye manchester united being a united it's time to say goodbye. Manchester United, being at United since I was 10, coming through the ranks at this great club has been a huge privilege for me. It's always been my dream to play for United, so making my first team debut in 2019 in the UEFA Europa League was a dream come true. I want to thank everyone at the club for giving me the opportunity, especially my coaches and my teammates during the 11 years. It's time for me to take the next step in my football journey when one door closes another one opens and i pray that god continues to guide me with every decision i make for it's for his glory known to me i hope that our paths will uh, will cross again in the future if it is god's will Liado out so i like it most when he talks about god you know 
God-fearing people are really different people altogether. And every time you front God, you really reach the high levels that others cannot reach, that don't really believe in him. So, Ethan Layard is a very good player. Ajax wanted him last year on the summer, and Tenag told never really approved that transfer. But for my case, I understand the Eric Ten Hag situation. When you're having Aaron Ranbi Saka and Diego Dalo playing as they are playing right now, that means Ethan Layard is surplus to requirement. And that's why they've gone ahead to sell him to Birmingham. Remember, they triggered his option here and they had to sell him that side. So I understand they are doing it in a very good way. Birmingham is a very good team with Man United. Um, there was uh, Hannibal. So we wait and see how that really looks to be after some time but anticipate he's really going to be one of those players that is going to be a hot cake in the next two years i don't see him really spending a lot of time in the championship and i won't be surprised if at all united go in for him for like three four years to come when he has really hit his prime because he's a very good right back and he plays very very well he creates lots of chances and last season he played last season he was he was playing for Kuhn Park Rangers and he really put in stats that were really overwhelming. So he played 32 games, one goal and two assists. So that is Ethan Layard for you. When he was playing for Bournemouth, six games. And uh, at Swansea, he played 20. And uh, he obviously did the didn't fall. He once played for MK Downs, 24 matches. So there is a very good player in him, especially going forward and is a press resistant player that you'll always love in your team so let's wait and see how his future is going to resonate with Manchester United whether the path their path has really come across again Lord knows whether they are parallel or they're going to be perpendicular at a certain point we hand it over to the Lord that's gonna hate to hand it over to him so guys thank you for watching and to tell me thoughts about Ten Hag blocking Greenwood cell in the comment section below then De Gea, are you really guys okay with how the board is treating David De Gea? And lastly, tell me your thoughts about about Ethan Laird. I sign out for now. See you later and I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Ciao, ciao.